Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use AJAX with the .NET MVC framework. So what you'll see is something like this. I will have a bunch of radio buttons with a user associated. When I click them, the updates are displayed at the bottom. You notice the timestamp here shows that every time I click there is maybe a second or two of elapsed time. However, the main part of the page here is not updated. And so that's the magic of AJAX is that you can do partial page updates. And so that's what we're going to see right ahead. So in this tutorial, we're going to create two different versions of this application. We're going to create the version where you have to create the button that says display results and the entire page will refresh. And then in the second part of the tutorial, We'll create the Ajax version and so you can see the distinction between the two. So let's get started coding. So I'm working with Visual Studio 2019. I'm going to choose a .NET Framework ASP web application. So I'm going to name my project something like Customers with Ajax in it so you can see what the demo is about. The .NET Framework is 472. For my project, I'm going to choose Empty, select the MVC folder, No Authentication, and click Create. The first part of the application is to create an object or a model. So let's go into the models folder, right click and add a new one. So the object I'm going to work with is called customer. So we'll choose code, class and name it customer. Each customer is going to have three properties. We'll give it an ID number, a name and their age. So an int, a string and an integer. Next let's create a constructor. So I'll right click and choose the uh, quick shortcuts and then create a constructor with all of the properties. So we're done with the customer's model for now. Let's go ahead and close it and save it. The next part of this process is to create a controller. So let's go into the controllers and add a new one. So right click, add a new controller. Let's choose empty and add. I will call it customer controller. So in this controller, I'm going to get some data that we can display on the app. Usually we would get it from a database and insert it here, but to cut the tutorial down to size, let's just do hard coding. So in this controller, I want to open up a view called customer. So I'll put inside of the view parentheses the word customer. Now let's go ahead and create that customer view. So we'll right click inside the code and choose add view. So I'm going to name it customer and not associate any model with it yet. And then we'll uncheck the layout page. Now in this application, I'm going to use a layout and have a header, a body, and the customer details. So let's create a new layout. So in order to do that, I'm going into the Views folder and I'm going to add a new folder. Let's call the folder name Shared. In the Shared folder, I'm going to right click and choose Add a View. I'm going to name it Underscore Layout. And so this will be the defining page for all of the parts of our app. So I'm going to change three things about this layout. First of all, we'll change the title so it'll get the page title value. So at page.title. Then inside of the body, we're going to render two things. We will render the header of the page, which hasn't been created yet, but we will soon make it. And then we will render the body. So the next piece I want to create is that header. So let's right click in the shared folder, choose the new view, We'll choose a partial page and we'll name it underscore header. When we click OK, we will get a blank page. So for the header, we're going to need a welcome message. So put something on there that says welcome to the customer Ajax example or something similar. And then in the second line, I want to display the current time when this page was rendered. And so I'll just simply say the current time is, and I'm going to use a razor uh, syntax here to say at datetime dot now. And so that will change every time the browser is refreshed. The next part of my application is going to be the customer's details section. So this is the part of the page that shows as the gray box. So I'm going to create this page and call it customer's detail using the underscore since it's a partial page. I'm going to include the model for the customer and make sure that's just in an empty uh, data format. Now I'm going to also select that I'm going to create it as a partial view and I'm going to use the script libraries. And so this is the part that will happen in the Ajax routine. This will be updated, only this partial page. 
So what I want to display in the customer details is the name of the person and their age. So the uh, helper that I'm going to search for is at HTML dot display name for. So we're going to get the name and then that's, that's going to be the, the display name. Plus I'm going to show the actual value. So display for and then use the arrow function to show the actual value of the name. And I'll put in a line break. The other part of the person's uh, identity I would like to show is their age. So we'll copy and paste the line and then change name to age for each of them. Lastly, I would like to show that this is updated at a specific time because this partial page will be updated while the main page is not updated. And so comparing the two timestamps will be instructive in just a few minutes. So that should be enough information to display the details of the customer. Let's move back to the controller now. So next I'm going to define some data for my application. First of all, I need to get the customer object in the customer model. So I'll type in the word customer, which is the name of my model, and then the word customer in lowercase. I have to include the using statement so that I can get to the models. Now the customer model we defined just a few minutes ago in this file here called customer. So I'm going to keep track of two pieces of data, not only a single customer, but also an entire list of them. So I will name the second variable as customers with a plural. So now down in the index function, let's define the customers list. So we'll create it as a new list of type customer. It's an empty list. Next, I would like to add a customer to the list. So remember, this would usually come from a database. Here, we're going to code them individually. So inside the add function, let's put in a new customer. So I'll just define a new customer with a constructor. So this customer is ID zero, her name is Sherry, and she's 37 years old. So let's copy and paste the first line and uh, then duplicate it maybe six times. Then for each of those, let's change the ID number to something unique. So I'll just go one through six, and then let's make up a new name for each person. So you can choose any name you like. I'm going to pick uh, Sherry, Tim, Charlene, Dan, and uh, Dane, I guess it is, and Elijah, Howard, and Dave, and then make up an age for each of them. So we just need some data that's somewhat unique to each person. So I apologize, but I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to take all this data and instantiate it inside a constructor. So let's right click in the code here and create a new constructor with no parameters. So just a basic constructor. And then I'm going to copy or cut and paste all of the data that I just created into the controller. Next, I'm going to save two pieces of data together. I want to save the entire list and I want to save a single customer. So a good data structure for this is called a tuple. So a tuple might be new to you. It's basically just a pair of items. So like a, an ordered pair. So I want to define my tuple as a list followed by a single item. So it's a list of customers, and then I want to make a single customer. So that will be my tuple. The reason why I'm creating this is I want to send this to my form or to my view as two separate pieces of data. So to define this specific tuple, I'm going to create a new tuple and the same format with the list is the first item and then the single customer is the second item. So for the first time I display the items, I want to display the entire list, and then I'm going to select the first one, or item zero, as the selected item. So this tuple will contain two items, a full list and a single customer. So now when I get to line 42 in my code, I'm going to add tuple as the parameter that's being sent to the view. So the first thing you do in a view is define what kind of data is on it. That's the model statement. And so I will define the group that it's being expected. So it's a tuple, which is the list of customers, and then followed by a single customer. That's what I just defined in the controller just a minute ago. Now you notice it does not allow me just to use the word customer here. It is not included yet in this file. So on the first line, I'm going to include the statement at using, and then the project name, which is customers Ajax, dot, and select models. And so now the customer object resolves itself here in the code. Let's also define this layout. So inside of the predefined uh, at symbol area, layout equals, and we'll point to the folder called shared, and layout is the file. The first thing I want to define on my page is a form. So I'll use at using, and then HTML.beginForm. We'll fill in the details of what kind of action is related to the form in a few minutes. If you've looked at other forms that are generated in uh, 
.NET MVC, you'll see this item called the Anti-Forgery Token. And so this is a security measure that you should include on every one of your forms, and it automatically ensures that no codes are intercepted between a code input from a form and, that, and the controller behind it. Now we're going to display every item of our user list on the page, and the button is either going to be selected or not selected. By default, we will set a variable called selected to be equal to false. So next I want to cycle through each item in my model. So I'll use a for each loop and I'll say var customer in model. When I put a dot, you can see that there are two different items, item one and item two. That's because up on line two, we defined our model as a tuple that has two things in it. So the first item is a list. So I'll use for each item in item one. So for the items that we're going to display, I'm going to show a radio button. So we'll use .html .radio button. The value of the radio button, we'll call it as customer number, and we will associate the customer's ID with it. This will come important again when we process the uh, form. We're going to need to know this field name. And for default, I'm going to have this not selected. So that's what the false means, not selected. So the second thing I want to display after the radio button is the customer's name. So we'll create a label and we'll print customer name. Now I want to conditionally set this form to have this button selected or not selected. So we will check to see if the index of this customer item is equal to zero, we'll change it to selected equals true. Finally, we need to create a submit button at the bottom of the page. So we'll do an input, type equals submit. We'll give it an ID such as submit button and the value will be what's displayed on the button. So we'll call it display details. So it's now time to test this out. Let's run the app. Now any application errors that you see were totally planned. We wanted to make sure that you have the opportunity to troubleshoot if we create some errors. So I launch the application and I navigate to where my route is expected to be. So that's the word slash customer after the address. And let's see what happens. So we've got some errors, just as I promised. Let's take a look here and it says, I could not find the layout called shared layout. And I went and I looked in this path called tilde views customer. Okay, so we can see right now that I named the layout incorrectly. So let's go fix that. So the view that I'm looking at here is in the customer view. Let's go check out the, co the code here. So the layout could not be found. Well, I made two mistakes here. First of all, I need to tell it which directory it's in. So let's do a tilde slash views. I think it's called views with an S, shared. And I think I have to put in the file extension as well. So shhtml, we'll save that. So this time when I run the application, it looks like I have displayed the uh, items correctly. So I have the header and I have this item here, which is all the people in the list. So congratulations. Now the next part that we have to put in is the details item down here. We have not included that yet. And so the details will show the item that it's selected. So for instance, if I select Tim, I should see Tim's name and age printed at the bottom of the form. So, but this uh, video is getting a little long, so we'll take care of the details at the bottom of the page in the next video.